Okay, it's the next day on in the DX amplifier build. But before I progress on with building this thing, there is one little issue which I want to address. And that's the way I've used a piece of steel for a heatsink and used paper and plastic insulators. Now, I do know that this is not the best idea, but what I forgot to mention in the previous video, because it completely slipped my mind like a lot of things do when I make my videos, is that this is only temporary. It was more or less just so the parts wouldn't move about while I was doing the point-to-point -point wiring, and when everything is done and I've got it all wired up and it's, sh and it's working the way it should, I will put it onto a proper heatsink and use the proper insulators. Unfortunately, right now I don't have any spare heat sinks, but I think I do have some insulators somewhere. So when this is complete, I will be doing that, but for now, I'm just going to have it as it is, and I am going to run some tests when it's done, but I'm not going to put anything more than about a watt through it so I don't burn any burn anything out. I have looked for some heat sinks online, but haven't had any luck, and they're way too expensive anyway. So I'm thinking of harvesting some old computers, maybe something like an old Pentium 2, I could take the heatsink out of that. I mean, those, those have those long processors that slot in, so should be about the right size and shape for this kind of thing. But anyway, that's enough of me rambling on about that. It's time to crack on and get on with the rest of this thing. Okay, we now have a completed output stage. And I've put on lots of different wires which are going to connect this to the various different parts of the circuit board. Got the positive, a positive rail, negative rail. This, um, the one that goes to the NPN part of the output stage. This one goes to the PNP. There's the feedback wire for the bootstrap. And of course, ground. So now I've just got to make the rest of this circuit and wire this up and we'll see how well this works right well okay the rest of the circuit is now done so um other part of the circuit please bring yourself into the camera shot thank you this is the other circuit that i'm um, the other part of the circuit that i've made which i'm going to connect up to the rest of this soon still got a few things to do to it as you can see, I've put all the components on. But I've got to break some of the circuit tracks. And of course, clip some of these wires. And there's a few little jumper wires that I've got to install as well. But everything seems to be wired up into the right place. I have discovered that I'm going to have to turn this diode round. I've put it in the wrong way round, but... I'm going to get on with all that right now. I've managed to find the right wire cutters. I have another pair of wire cutters here, but these are absolute pants. They're about as much use as a tissue when my nose is running. So I'm using these ones instead. These other ones are crap. Okay, now work on the other part of the circuit is now complete. As you might be able to see, I've now put the circuit brakes in, whatever they're called. My mind has just gone blank. I can't remember the name. Put the jumper wires on. Also, I have done some experiments with this. I decided to power this up as it is right now. And, surprisingly, I do get a buzz out of the speaker. I'm going to turn the power supply on. Okay, that's powering it on 24 volts either way. So that's 48 volts going through this. And if I touch one of the wires, you might be able to hear it. Doesn't matter which one. Do get a buzz through the speaker. Which I'm really surprised that it's actually able to do that at this stage. I didn't think it would do anything. Now I tried this with connecting an audio source up to one of these wires, but nothing happened. So I'm going to connect the rest of this up. As far as I can tell, everything is wired up properly in this. Nothing is shorted or open. And everything seems to be connected to what it's supposed to be. The same goes for this point-to-point -point thing. So I'm going to put these all together now and see if this works. Okay, well, I now have everything hooked up and it does not appear to be working. I turn it on and it just seems to put DC straight into the speaker. 
Here we have the speaker. Now I'm only going to power this on about four and a half volts. So that's about nine volts total. I turn the power on and watch the speaker. As you can see, the cone moves out. Actually, I'm powering it on about 12 volts. You know, six volts either way. And as I turn the power on and off, you can see that by the movement of the speaker cone, it is putting DC into the speaker. So I, I guess I'm going to have to go through this with a fine tooth comb and see what's going on. Everything seems to be connected up. I don't think anything is misconnected. Even though it takes about 425 milliamps. I've tested it while the power's on and nothing in there seems to even be getting warm. It, everything is still stone cold. So I don't know what is going on with this thing. I'm going to go over this board, this little board here with a fine tooth comb. I'm going to try to find out what it's actually doing. I'm going to draw my own schematic from how I can see everything wired up on this. And just maybe I'll be able to find out what's going wrong. I mean, everything seems to be okay. All the circuit brakes are where they should be. I mean, all the track brakes are where they should be. There's no two tracks shorted together where they shouldn't be. And still, it does not work. So I'm going to find out what's going on. Well, everybody, I think I'm going to have to hang up my tools on this one. I have double checked, triple checked, even quadruple checked every single connection. Everything matches the schematic. There are no shorts or opens. Everything is connected to what it should be. And still, when I turn it on, it still does that. I don't put any more juice into it in case I blow something, but... You can see when I turn the power on, we've got 600 and... That was a bit worrying there, 666 milliamps, but... Got quite a lot of current going in the meter. I can even put my iPod... I can plug my iPod into it. Start this playing. Oh, I mean, the play button on this is naffed, but... There we go. When I've had the volume on full blast, there is nothing coming out. The only thing that it's doing is pushing the cone out. That's all it's doing. It's not working. So I don't know. I have no idea what it's not working. Fellow YouTubes. Now, in this universe, as we understand it, the laws of physics, thermodynamics and logic in most places usually apply. However, in my room, I don't think any of my things have even heard of those laws because, by a stunning turn of events, the DX amplifier is now working. I kid you not, it is actually working now. And I've barely done anything to it. All I did was just disconnect a few wires, then reconnect them up again, exactly as they were before, and somehow it now works. I'm now going to turn it on. There is a little pop in the speaker, I'm not exactly sure why. But if we measure the output at the speaker connection, you can see the voltage is absolutely zero. There's no no more DC coming out of that amplifier. Okay, this is a closer look at it. And you can see I've added this capacitor here between the speaker and the amplifier. That way, if it should do that weird thing again where it puts DC out, it's not likely to blow the speaker or blow any of the transistors or damage my power supply. Because I really don't want it to do that. So that's there just for safety. Now I'm going to play something through it. I have my iPod connected up. That is if I can get this thing to turn on. This thing is a little bit messed up actually. There we go. Let's just try to find something good. Oh, now it's going back to the menu. 
And I'm not even showing it in the camera again like I always do. Right. Uh, i just got to try to figure out how to use this thing now. Um, okay, songs, I think that's the way we go. Yeah. Just try to find something that won't get me into any trouble. Okay, I'll use a song from a Nintendo 64 Earthworm Jim. That'll do. I'll turn the volume up. Turn the I'll turn the power supply off. That was my blinds rattling just then. That's the power off. Now I'll turn it back on again because I've got it hooked up to my homemade power supply to power it. play button on this thing is knackered, that's why it's, I'm having a bit of trouble with it. Of course that would have been much louder, but this iPod doesn't have very much output on it, so even at full blast, barely get any volume, but this thing is working. I can't believe it. So I guess the next thing to do would be to put this onto a proper heat sink and uh, with all the proper insulators and everything. So I'll see you again next time. And until next time, goodbye. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did. And tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his Electronic Workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, Click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.